And this unit here, it has the capacity of 6,000 pounds max gross weight. And it fits a 1 and 7 eighths 50 millimeter or 2 inch ball. And uh, it's got a lock on it. And it's got a safety thing so if it falls off this automatically gets pulled and and it locks it up and locks the brakes up on the on the trailer here's the master cylinder you put the brake fluid in there and then it's got a little opening on the back there where you run your your brake fluid and then tee off from there both directions on as many axles as you like so i got some half decent uh backing plates and brake shoes and wheel cylinders for the for the trailer but they're kind of rusty a little bit so i decided that i would throw them in the acid bath and clean them up it takes about 15 minutes and they get some pretty clean and i just take them like this got a little tray of acid over here got it tilted up i just lay it in there and just let it do its thing it just eats all the rust off leaves a nice leaves a nice backing plate so now I'm just gonna put these on the furnace and dry them up quick so after the acid bath I uh, shot some zinc primer on them and uh, painted them with some uh, polyurethane paint so now they're nice and shiny and clean no more rust on them a little pitted slightly but no rust So in my bolt bin, I couldn't find any any nuts that fit these studs. And these studs, they, they tap out easy. So I just chased the hole with a rat, a rat tail file a little bit. And I got these bolts that I have. Just put a nut on them and, and bolt it through with that. So there we go. We got some big bolts on there. Lots of studs sticking out the back. So it's not like they're too short, so that'll hold it on because they're bigger, bigger bolt. I like it. So I have this old cylinder and it's got like a rust spot on the piston here. So it's kind of an old thing. I don't think it'll probably damage the, the seal and stuff in here. So basically I just took the mini grinder and cut the, uh, cut the clevis off on the back of it. And then there was two halves to over here on this side as well one on each side so I cut them off I'm going to repurpose them and I'm going to use them for welding on the end of the cylinder so that I can uh, mount up the cylinder that lifts the wheels so here's a here's an eyelet right here the, the mate to this one right here I'm going to use this for the other cylinder but basically I'm welding that right on the end of it and this is an, uh, the other end and there's half of it so I'll probably end up taking the mini grinder and cutting that off right there and making it so that it looks like this one and then I'm gonna weld it on there and then that's gonna be the cylinder that drops the wheels onto the road or lifts them up into the notch of the frame there so I got that eye zapped on there it's gonna grind it a little bit and then this eye right here this will either get welded onto the trailer, onto a piece of angle iron and extend down to the to the arm that goes to the differential or the to axle, or it'll go to directly to the axle. Let's figure it out as I go here once I get things lined up and laid out underneath the trailer. So there's how it's kind of set up there with the three axles. Now what I need to do is make the make a notch in the frame <clears throat> right where that rear axle is sitting. I need to make a, a notch in there. Then I need to like reinforce the notch so it's an actual strong notch. And maybe I might lay some flat bar on the top here to give it some more meat because that's where this bed pivots. This bed pivots right right there so i have to make sure that the frame still has its integrity 
Then I want to make it so that there's a swing arm that comes from about there down two plates with holes in them and then an arm that goes to the differential or to the rear rear axle and is welded solid so that it swings up and down into the notch of the trailer and then I need to put a short hydraulic cylinder right in there between the top of the axle and the, and the frame itself so I can drop that axle down and give it some give it some some force so that it can help carry the load so I need to make a swing arm here on both sides and then make sure that it doesn't have any any side movement like this then I need to give it some kind of a pan hard bar so I need to be able so I need to put like two ears on the axle that go up over there on that axle and then make it come up to the bottom of this on the back side of this frame so that it's it's got a straight up and down movement and it doesn't allow the axle to go back and forth in this position now it won't be very often that this axle gets used it'll be only a stationary support to lift stuff off the ground behind it with the gantry crane on onto the trailer but it's a possibility that i might come across a load that's more than seven thousand pounds which those axles can carry but if we have this axle into play then we'll be able to carry ten thousand five hundred and that'll be that'll basically be not including the weight of the trailer so whatever the trailer weighs i'll find out and then i'll be able to subtract that from the actual um, capacity of three axles and say okay my rating is for this much and then i'll be able to haul this much on these axles but ultimately i can hold 10,500 pounds including the frame so yeah another fender over there had some leftover paint from the backing plates so i shot some galvanized primer on this arm because i had to use the paint up i didn't want to waste it it was good quality urethane paint so i sprayed that arm so that's that i got another cross piece welded in there Another cross piece welded there. So I'm reinforcing this push area here. So when I lift it up, it doesn't kind of like bow and cave in because it's pushing on something that's sturdy that brings the rest of the, the frame with it. So yeah. And then I gotta put some spacers on this side. And that's going to offset my frame where it, or my 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 tongue where it needs to be. I thought I had to cut the tongue off, but from what I can understand is the space between the cylinder side here and the and the side of the tire, the the, the side of the tire, the side of the cylinder, and the side of the tire, they're like really close. But this side here is the spacers on it, and there is there's plenty of room there so that means those spacers that have on the side bring it out so this clears because when the axle jumps up it has to clear that that cylinder this axle and those two there because the cylinder extends into that area especially the back the the middle tire so it's got to clear that cylinder so yeah, yeah, it's lots of, lots to think about when you're making stuff off the hip. So basically, that's what I did today. I welded this box in here, and then I put two ears on a piece of pipe that I welded into a V, and welded it really strong, and put a cross piece across it.
drill the hole through the two ears that go inside the box here. And then I welded on an eye right there onto the end of the corner of the pipe. And then I mounted the, the cylinder on the eye. And then I welded a wash, big three quarter inch wash around the axle and made it go up to another three quarter inch washer. So that there basically holds the wheels off the ground. And then what I need to do now is, is I'm going to put some more support on this side of that pin. And then I'm going to be able to put some juice into here and when I need the wheels to go down to the ground because they're up right now not like the other ones over there they're just peeking past but this one here is right up so it's not touching the ground so that means these springs are doing their job and it's holding it up off the ground but as soon as I power, power up some fluid into there with the use of a solenoid then I'm gonna divert some fluid into a into a switch to power up this cylinder, these two cylinders here, then that's going to make the wheels drop down at any position that, that I stop them pushing down in. So that will that will give the back of the trailer some support. So you can see here that there's, there's a two inch gap between the ground on the back tire compared to the other two so that is the helper axle that is up and resting there until it's needed so what else have I done here um, I put some ratchets on the side here and I put one on the front on both sides and I still have to put a fender on it yet on the other side here but there's that side that's done I'm gonna clean up that cylinder right there but I'll do some cleaning with the wire brush and clean over it I, I think I'm I was gonna sandblast the trailer but it's just uh, the, the problem is I don't have an area to sandblast yet I will eventually when I do find somebody it's got like a field and they'll say yeah go for it then you know then I'll be able to sandblast my heart content but right now I don't want this thing to sit another year you know getting surface rust on it because I've spent you know quite a bit of time into it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire brush over everything as much as I can I'm gonna shoot a coat of uh, uh, zinc primer on top of it and then I'm gonna paint paint it with some black tractor paint and get at least get a coat of paint on it and if it if it gets starts to get rusty in the future well that's when I'll hit it with this hand blaster and you know very likely it'll, it'll blow off like no tomorrow because I mean the paint that I'm putting on isn't like isn't like epoxy or anything but you know it, at least it'll it'll seal it up enough no more than than any other trailer company uses the paint they use to put that put on their trailers and when i do blast it next time i will powder coat it i will take it to the mennonite and get it done because this guy does an amazing job and nothing better than powder coating like these rims right here those rims are powder coated i mean it, you can get right into the crotch between the outer ring and the inner hub area and, and and the static electricity will draw it right in that gap right there around the edge so yeah i'm i'm coming around the bend it's, it's basically almost got what i want to get done on it done and fabricated so it'll be nice to have it finished finally the swiss army trailer <laughs> so here's my my fenders i just basically uh used a piece of angle iron and welded a bracket into the frame and made like a perch here and this here perch is uh, uh, separate from the fender so that if I need to I can take it off that's the main support right there and then I just have another little attachment right at the back here 
and this material here is it's basically it's sign material this here is aluminum and it's painted white and then there's another piece of aluminum on the back side and and it's white as well and then in between is laminated I don't know I think 3 16 plastic so it's like kind of flexible and this is paint so I can just sand this down I'll just fill the holes a little bit with some panel adhesive and make it look pretty and then uh, that'll be my fenders you know and they're flexible so I'm just gonna leave them open like that with cracks in them so they flex and uh, leave it at that I mean all you need is a fender to make it legal so that's that's my fenders